laying down, and then it was just such a a weird day. That that parade path, I can't remember Endless. what happened. It was just bedlam. Yeah. Like it was, I, and that shows to it speaks to how excited the city was. But realistically, wasn't it seven hours or something? Like I, I like we were we were on site. And they never got to us pretty much until our show was over. It was ridiculous. <laughs> like, it was crazy, Tat Man. Yeah. And, of course, there was no water for us, too, so we were really excited. Oh, you got stiffed. So, oh, oh, we got yeah. stiffed. No we water, no food, wow. no nothing. Just sit there <laughs> we were, and, like, we're dying. That doesn't happen when the Tat Man's on, on location. We were complete pigeons. I know, because you would have sent me or Frankie to get some. That's why. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was. Uh, Where's O Dog? Well, I sent him for water two hours ago. Yeah, yeah but Tat Man, like, honestly, even at those Leaf games, like, be honest. Like, you, what's your routine? You get up there and it's, it's what, a drumstick and pizza? Like, do you. Depends on the night. Depends on the night. I know yeah. how the night starts. It starts with the press meal at about 4 yeah. 30. Yeah. And then yeah. for some reason, he says, I got to go. And he's got to prep for two hours before the pregame show. He's got to brush his teeth. Tatman always brushes the teeth before going on air, <laughs> which I thought was weird, but he does it anyway. I, that, because he got a great smile. That's oh, the thing. Don't, don't want to knock you over. I need you to work with me. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was just one of those things. I always seen you wheel away with your toothbrush and your toothpaste. I'm like, what the? He brushes his teeth every. Every shift, it's your tradition. Well, and I was sitting beside uh, your your cup that you used to uh, spit in. Oh, well, whatever, chill. man. That yeah. doesn't matter. But yeah. uh, <laughs> and then the second period, we'd be popcorn. You might want a late night snack. Sometimes they had pizza up there. There was ice cream bars. Yeah. But one thing about Vegas, Jimmy, I'll tell you, they had the best press box. There was like. It's it, what is it noodles? There's like a oh. candy station or something. Oh. It was unbelievable. Like they, oh. it was, you know what it was? It was a Vegas buffet. Oh. Like it, it, you know, and it wasn't a dollar ninety nine. You just go and all you all you can eat. There were just pigs everywhere, just eating it was, away. It was free? It was unbelievable. I think so. I I don't remember. I I, be, I believe we rolled in there and just went to town on it. Like it was unbelievable. You're right. There was a candy bar. Like just like everything, like you could, you know, you take a little cup and you put all the candies in it and stuff. Oh. It was popcorn, pizza, pretzels, you name it. It was unbelievable. Does Frankie C know about that? Well, I think so. I don't know if he's I don't know if he's been, been there. I don't Vegas. know if he's been to Vegas for a game. We'll have to ask yeah. him tomorrow. I mean, he uh, he he sent out a notice on on Twitter that we can't use any of his material, and I was trying to think of what his material would be. No, oh, he doesn't have any. <laughs> Well, I think he says yes, guy, no guy a lot too. So maybe that's uh, sanctioned. Yeah, he's yeah he's leaning in on that one. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Joining us now on the Maple Toyota Hotline is Dave Pullen. Mr. Pullen, how are you today, sir? Very well, gentlemen. Just uh, winding down a little bit. Just no different from the players. You take a deep breath after everything's over. You're waiting for the next game to come on, and then you realize that you don't have to really think about that for a little while. So. Just uh, decompressing like the players are. Pooley, what did you make of, you know, Vegas's effort there to, to finish it off? I mean, it was exciting, and Bill Foley's talking, the six-year plan, all of that. But, I mean, could have gone any better for that organization, the way they laid it out and, and you know, this march right to the cup? Well, that last game was just an absolute statement about the team. Like, that kind of wrapped up the entire six years, didn't it? It was so dominant. And fortunately, uh, I had a little experience with that. I was on the receiving end of an 8-3 game in game five against the Oilers, and you just flat out knew how good they were. Like, they were so good. And that's right. the way Florida had to feel playing against Vegas because that game was dominant. Florida hung in there first little bit and you know they hung it a little bit in the series they got a win but man that's a good vegas team guys and and no reason to think they're not going to be back next year either you know they'll get they'll get a little bit like it'll be a little bit of a short summer for them but not too bad not like the last couple of crazy pandemic compressed summers and i i think that's a really good team and i think they'll be back and you know they'll do whatever they have to do like some star will be available Vegas will get him. <laughs> Pooley, when does it start getting hairy now? Like, I know that even for Kelly McCrimmon and Bill Zito going to the finals, like, this ends and, like, they got to get down and sit down and get their business in order. All the teams do, don't they? It's going to be, I think, a pretty active 
time frame now leading up until the draft, including the draft. It really is, though, and, you know, the time really gets tight here. Yeah. And I think we made a trade when I was in Toronto for David Boland. Like, I'm thinking it was within two days of them winning the Cup that mm-hmm. Boland was on his way out of Chicago. Like, it was that quick that Stan Bowman had already moved on to the next thing. I don't think they'd had the parade yet. And if they did, they just had the parade. And Stan Bowman was on there all kinds of cap pressure, and we knew that. And so I would say Vegas is, you know, both Vegas and Florida have shown how aggressive they'd be. If I'm another general manager, I'm calling them to see if they want to do something right away because yeah. they're both active guys. In Florida, you know, Zito, the moves he made, they weren't good enough to win. He's going to get right back on his horse again. Well, that's the biggest challenge you hear. I, I was reading even today out of Vegas, like they, you know, the, the season's not even, you know, cold yet. And they're talking about potentially Riley Smith being available because they've got to make room for other players to sign. Even a guy like Barbashev, if they want to keep him, like somebody's going to have to be thrown overboard. And that's, the, you know, you're hoping that the cap can be negotiated up a little bit, but it's not going to go up to a point where the price point they're at right now. And where are you at, Pooley, with, you know, people saying, well, they were, you know, they, they cheated the system and they had a $96 million payroll. I, I mean, ultimately, they... They put it together, and they won the cup. I do not have a problem with it at all. Yeah. Uh, it's within the rules. Every trade goes through. Every signing goes through the league. You can't do it. You can't make a move, guys, unless the league okays it. And the people that say that want to think that's the reason their team didn't win. But look at all the teams. I think at the end of the year there were, I'm going to say there were 16 or 18 teams in LTIR. So there were that many teams over the cap. So if you're going to go over the cap anyway on LTIR and you're over by $5 million, so a team's $20 million over, that just means they were over, they spent that much more than you did. And, you know, you think of other teams, I mean, the Leafs have been over entirely. And Tampa gets it done. If you're playing within the rules and you want to spend more money than other people do, so be it. I don't have a problem with it at all. Uh, Holy, I've lost hope with the copycat you know teams saying oh we're going to go try to bolster our defensive core because it's just probably not going to happen people had teams have their players but do you think the copycat idea just the idea of being aggressive and trying to do something might come into play for some teams that are pretty quiet you look at a team like winnipeg they're not really they don't make splashes a lot or, or just teams might make might, might take a chance on somebody or something it certainly should, oh, and, you know, and the, the article I wrote on the weekend said the players are going to force their hands. Like, that's what's happening in Winnipeg. Their hand is being forced. I don't think Kevin Cheveldayoff has a choice. He's going to have to move people or end up losing them a year later. And, you know, they've had their run. It wasn't good enough. So I think it's going to be, you know, it's going to be interesting, guys, to watch the draft and see if there's a trickle down in the draft. And there's a kid who I know, a family friend, Matt Wood is his name. And he's a big kid. He played for the U18 team. He's from B.C. And he played at UConn this year. But he's a big kid. And he's, you know, 6'3 or 6'4, really skilled. And there were some questions about his skating. But is a kid like that going to move up in the draft? I think he was somewhere in the top 15 or 18. But you watch the big skilled forwards on Vegas and Nicholas Waugh or guys like that, and you're thinking – you know, does, does, does the movement, you talk about the copycat, even move into the draft? I mean, we know it's going number one, but, and that Fantelli's a big kid, mm-hmm. you know, and, and the Swede's a big kid, and, and Matthew Wood's a big kid, and is that going to be a trend? But you just, it's easy to say it's a copycat league, but you're not going to go out and just find a Nicholas Haig just hanging out waiting for you to sign him. Um, you'd like to think that's the case. Yeah. But the one thing I would say is I think you will see – Teams being willing to move away from totally draft and develop, and realize you've got to you've got to accelerate that plan. Yeah, no the draft yeah. and develop on a pure basis, guys. It just doesn't work. You get all of a sudden now, you know, you draft and develop, and all of a sudden now you got a waiver issue because kids need waivers, or you've got to have a full mix. You've got to go free agents. You've got to draft, and you have to make trades. So, 
You should have lots of dance parts out, partners out there, Oh, You really should to be able to get stuff done right now. How about this, Pooley? Using the CBA, how about an offer sheet? Do you think we're going to see one here? Like, I, I, I know it's kind of an – and you've been in management. I Why know it's would it kind come of a, out of the blue, though, Jamie? But, but at some point, teams got to start – with the level of competition, the parity yeah. – uh, you know, I would do it, man. I, I know, but it's easier said than done because you need the player to sign it as well. But do you, you know, is there anything out there that would lead you to believe there could be an offer sheet even potentially this summer? Yeah, I'd like to dig down on that player-wise because it would be a little bit under the radar. I don't think it'll be one of the star players, but it'll be a really good player. Right, right. If I think, if I think way back... Bobby Clark tried to sneak Ryan Kessler out of Vancouver. Remember? Yeah, I, remember he was like, I remember that, yeah. Like, <laughs> really early in his career. And it was like he loved that kid. And, he was, and it was almost like totally under the radar. It's like, you mean you didn't offer she did one of the twins? No, 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 Ryan Kessler. You know, it was, it was before Kessler was a royal pain, and he had the ingredients. But I would like to see that type of move where you go hard against a team that's up against the cap, that's really up against it, that has a couple of key guys to sign and go after one of their lesser lights and try and pick them off. Well, that, I, I, a prime I, example of that, David, is Noodle said for about a year and a half, t- uh, Ottawa should offer sheet Sorelli or somebody yeah. should offer sheet Sorelli because they were probably up against it. And if you threw a bunch of money at them, you know, I don't know if Tampa could have matched. Yeah. You could have got him at a vulnerable time, oh, for sure. Yeah. And that's exactly the type of player I'm talking about. Who I saw Anthony, by the way, at the open and said hi to him. Um, uh, but that's the type of player, exactly the type of player. Like, that guy's going to help you win. He did help them win. And the ingredients to show, you know, that those guys are out there. You've got you've to go to your pro scouts. You've also got to go to your amateur scouts. And say maybe someone that, that was an Anthony Sorellian Jr. but hasn't quite hit his stride yet. And really push your entire group together. You know, teams have the habit of splitting the pro scouts and amateur scouts. Your meetings are separate, everything. But some trades that are made, you need both sides of those groups. And so maybe pull all of them together and really start brainstorming oh, to find who the next Sorelli or Kessler is, who's, you know, maybe his fourth or fifth year in the league and just hitting their stride. Well, for me, I, I just, this reason why is you look at a team like Boston, like Jeremy Swayman is 24 and he's an RFA. And I, you know, I, I, did, I thought he had an inconsistent season. He still had great numbers, obviously with the Bruins, with what they did, but I think he's a really good goaltender and you got to all mark for a couple more years at 5 million, but you offer him 5 million. I don't know if they want to spend 10 in net. Like that's the thing. So it's, you know, you, even if he signs it, now you're. It's a situation if Boston wants to keep him, you might jam them up and jam their system up a little bit based on the financial situation. And if not, you get yourself a 24 year old, you know, potential starting goaltender. If not, for sure, really good tandem goaltender. Like that's a guy that I look at. You're right. There's, I think there's guys throughout the league. Joe from the bridge said Evan Bouchard would be a guy. You know, maybe that you look at. Like I don't know what Bouchard's price point would be but he certainly had some great uh, statistical you know points in the playoffs for the Oilers being the quarterback of that power play and right now I I think you've got to look at all avenues uh, across right. the board you've got to you've got to look to make yourself better and like Vegas you've got to give them credit because they found different ways boy you, you know you talk about a sneaky trade there's there's certain times of the year where you know teams don't make trades right and, and one of them would be like December, right before Christmas. That's when they stole Chandler Stevenson from Washington. It is about yeah. the middle of December, you know, when no one else has even thinking about making trades. And you've got him on the radar. George McPhee would have had him when he was in Washington. Pro scouts like him. Behind Kuznetsov, behind um, Backstrom. You know, at Lars Eller would have been there too. So you know who he's behind. There's the guy you pick out. So... I, I know teams spend a ton of time scouting other teams. I don't think they utilize the avenue of pro scouts enough. I agree. Like that's a, you know, I, I just think it's a it's a challenge when you've got situations like that where 
you know, you, you can jam a team up or you need to, um, you know, build on something for your own group. I, I wanted to follow up, too, on one last thing for is Alex to bring it. You know, what's the thought process there where you <laughs> take no, him to – but it's well, uh, you t- you arbitration take a, is but, but it's you can walk him to free agency. Are you hoping that you just get it done before that pooley or are you just you know because I if you settle or if he gets awarded you can't trade him. Is that the rule, correct? That's that's the rule. Um because you're going for there's a team selected arbitration yeah. that you can go after the last year in the contract and try and get a fifteen percent discount. And it's kind of a weird rule, but if you look at the way his contract was, guys, it, it, the AAV of that contract is 6.4. Right. But the agent stacks it, so the last year's $9 million, so the qualifying offer is coming off of $9 million. He's not a $9 million player. He's right. not. And, and, you know, and if I'm auto, I'm like, look, we didn't sign that contract. That was the deal you made in Chicago, and I would try and sign that guy for you know, for a reasonable number, but try and get him signed to a long term deal. I think goal scoring is a commodity. I think he has a better year than I think what did he finished with twenty eight last year. Yeah. I think he bopped that back up. I think he's in the forties again. That's a good group. But I'm working off a six point four number, not a nine number. Like I'm not starting and saying you were actually supposed to make nine this year, so that's what they're gonna base this contract off. I don't care how Chicago structured it. That's not what I'm dealing with. And it's going to be interesting, guys, you know, to get to that situation. Um, with Mike Landlauer buying the Ottawa Senators, I think that's going to be a really interesting team to watch because that's going to be a full-cap team the day he takes charge. And he will be aggressive and he'll be creative in the way he does business. And that team will get every opportunity to get every resource to win. And they've got a pretty good foundation. You know too well, Jamie, for all the games you do, they've yeah. got a really strong foundation. And he'll be a guy that will help them put the finishing touches on it. I happen to think the Brinkett would be a guy I'd, I'd want to keep at, at 25 years old and, you know, a multiple 40-goal scorer. I just think he fits. He didn't have a great year, but I, I, I think I'm still interested in keeping him at the number I want to keep him at. Agreed. Yep. Bully, we're, we're talking up Ottawa, and, uh, you know, so for the Leafs, I mean, that's that's something you look at. Uh, how about uh, the Florida Panthers? What do you see them doing next year? Is is this what we can expect on a yearly basis? You know, I think contractually they're in pretty good place, but, you know, I, I so much, if you'd asked me this question three months ago, I'd say, well, they'd probably be trying to find a way to get out of Bob's contract because there's two <laughs> years left. I'm not saying that now. Um you know, maybe you look at moving a Spencer Knight, who would still be a commodity on the market. You know, he's worked through some personal things, but you might do that. I think I think that's a team that, you know, I, I'm expecting them to be aggressive and, and look to make another run. And you know, health wise, if they're healthy, they're they were still. Don't forget the Presidents Cup winner two years ago. This year wasn't a total aberration with them going to the finals. Pooley in Toronto here. Everyone's like, oh, are they going to trade the? one of the big four, but looking at their roster, I think Joe from the bridge had a, a board of it the other day. This team's going to be different regardless of what they do, because they got a lot of holes to fill. It's going to be very different and it's going mm. to have a Brad Trelleving stamp on it. And you know what, what all that looked like. And the one thing that uh, tree did in Calgary was he was able to both trade for and sign. Like he's got to be a pretty good salesman for free agents, because think of some of the free agents he brought in there. Tanev would be one. The goaltender would be one. Markstrom. Yeah. Maybe the, the most surprising one, Blake Coleman. Like, how is a U.S. kid from Texas who's playing in Tampa, like, you got to be a pretty good salesman to convince him to come. And then, of course, Nazem Kadri. So in the free agent market, he, he has to be able to paint a vision of what he can sell. But... I think Leaf fans would be hoping that, you know, the defenseman that he's both traded for in his time, he would have traded for Dougie Hamilton. He would have traded for Noah Hannafin. Um, he's made some pretty good deals for D, and that would be number one. But also, you know, able to, to create a vision pretty well. I think you've got to rebuild arguably half the D I'd be looking at. And, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and, and then you know you have 10 UFAs. 
the entire bottom six could be different. So if you don't move any of the core four, it's going to be a very different team and and a different management philosophy in how that team is built. Pooley, I, I might be in the minority, but I I thought that signing today, Jesper Bratt, was a really good signing for Jersey. Like a good number, term, the, at his age. You know, like I'm looking, Jack Hughes makes $8 million a year, and he has seven years left. Oh, and Jesper Bratt comes in at 7.875 below him. So that's the bar in Jersey. And Hughes is a superstar, legitimately a superstar at $8 million a year. Jesper Bratt's had two years at 72 points and 32 goals last year. Signs for 7.8. They got Heischer at 7.2. All these guys are 22 and 24 years old. Like, they're signed for basically the wheelhouse of their career. I mean, do you not agree that's a good signing, or am I missing something, Pooley? It's an excellent signing, but it's, it's, you're able to do it because you have your internal cap in place. Right. And, you know, and Ottawa has a similar situation. Like, their best player, Brady Kachuk, well, Timmy Stutzla, is a superstar on the rise. He gets a little bit more, not a lot more, like almost like 50 cents more. And with Hughes, with Heischer, now with Bratt, I think Tommy Fitzgerald's done a really strong job there of convincing that group. And you might look, you know, just up the road to Boston to the model that was perfected in saying that, you know, Patrice Bergeron's our best player. You're going to make less than him, Brad Marchand, and, and that's the way it's going to be. And, you know, and, and they were hung in with that philosophy for a long time before David Posternak blew it out of the water, but at the appropriate time. So I think right. Jersey, man, their defense, they're, they're going to have, you know, um, they've got the, uh, the young defenseman they drafted a couple of years ago, that's Nemitz, yeah. who played the American League, and then they got Luke Hughes jumping in. Man, they are going to be a handful. But it's been really well managed because you've set your internal cap and, and the beauty of it is when you have your internal cap and your best player is making a good number, everybody can fall into place, and they can feel good about themselves. You yeah. know, what, what's Jesper Bratt going to say? Well, guess what? I want to play with, you know, with Jack Hughes because yeah. I'm going to have a pretty nice life if I do, and, you know, and I can 7.8 a year, 7.7 a year goes a long way back in Sweden. Absolutely. Cooley, thanks very much. Really appreciate it. Okay, guys. Have a great night. Dave Poulin joined us on the Maple Toyota Hotline. Build your next dream Toyota at Maple Toyota. And check out Maple Toyota's pre-owned inventory arriving daily. Guy, it's time to Toyota. Visit mapletoyota.com. So financial clarity on some of the other teams is what he's saying. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I don't know. I was looking at their cap structure. Their highest paid player is Dougie Hamilton. He's 29 years old. So he's got one, two, three more, five more years that takes him to 34. Like he's still got lots of really good hockey left. And then you've got Hughes, Brat, Heischer, you know, under contract for, for term, for basically their whole, you know, the, the prime of their careers. Like yeah, that's but a, the thing. The thing that I've, I've continued to say is, it's great to have the idea of locking up all your young players for eight-year contracts at a number that you like. But if there's not a whole lot of winning going on, how much sense does that make? Well, and That's okay. why there's an appreciation for Vegas, how it was like, oh, maybe we need to tweak that, maybe we need to tweak that. And let's be honest, if they didn't win, everyone would say they were crazy and they're too aggressive because that's what happens yeah. when you don't win. But, like, Locking up your guys, that's great and everything. You might get your cap in order. You could pull, talked about getting a number and this and that. But if they don't win together, what's, but, what does it matter? Well, the point is, is if they don't win, those are movable contracts. Agreed but, with but that. Not, one, Agreed of, not with one of those guys is at a double digit. They, you know, the Leafs have three at double digits. Not one of those guys has a double digit in their, you know, yes. But I think Jack Hughes is in the conversation with the top tier in the league now. And he makes eight million a year for the next seven years. That's 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 good cap management to a point where now all of a sudden they can continue to add to their depth. They're, you know they got to deal with Miles Wood, who's unrestricted. He's twenty seven. That's a guy if I'm the Leafs, I'd be looking at. He's a hell of a player, and he's yeah. mean. and you talk and, about trading one of those guys, Jamie. Maybe that's one of the main reasons you want to look into it. I don't want three guys in double digits. I'll take two. Like just huh? the simple fact of that. The simple fact of that. Well, I don't know. I mean, we'll have to see what Brad Tree Living decides here. But it it just it's interesting to look at the cap structure of certain teams, and 
you know, like Pooley pointed, Boston just has this, you know, they've had it for years. Tampa has it. You know, New Jersey's got it. And, you know, I, I know if our host was here, his head would blow right off his body because he'd be yelling and screaming going, why does, you know, why does uh, everyone else seem to have that? But in Toronto, they don't have that. They can't get that. Those guys had to get every every extra dollar. And, you know, I, I, I mean, it'll just be interesting to see how Tree Living manages that moving forward. Coming up next, yes guy, no guy. You ready for that? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Can't wait. Time. This is overdrive. You have to answer the, You have to answer them too, though, Jimmy. Oh, absolutely! It's yes guy, no guy. This is overdrive in TSN 1050 <laughs> okay, and TSN 1050 and TSN two. Yes guy, no guy. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, drivers and passengers, and all members of Yes Guy Nation, coast to coast in this fine country of ours. Time now for our yes guy, no guy. All rights waived. And Frankie C. Is in studio to join What's us. What's up, guy? It's unbelievable. You wow, came dark. Fellas. Wow, this is a star studded edition of Yes Guy, No Love Guy. It. I'm happy Jimmy let me join after disparaging me on my drive over to the studio. It was very nice of you. We're making amends here. <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. I mean, you said, you, you, you know, you put out the, the litigation line of you better not steal our stuff, and we were trying to figure out what your stuff is. It's all, all the stuff you say is my stuff. <laughs> yes, guy. I, I mean, love we, it. We had a search party out there. We couldn't find anything. I have so many. There's just, it's under wraps right now. I got a lot of stuff in beta. It's coming out soon. Don't yeah, worry. Frankie, one question. I mean, did, did Tatman ever tell you a story where he used to listen to vinyls and dance in the basement or anything? Or did he just tell old that story? No, Was he, it only... he didn't tell me about the dancing, but he did tell me about all the records he has. But you know what he does? And I don't know if you've experienced this. Oh, doing the Leaf games with the Tatman. Be sitting there. It's like a TV timeout or a whistle. And I look over at his phone. This guy's bidding on things on eBay in the middle of a game. <laughs> like, okay, Jimmy, guy, you're going like, to win or you're going to get it on, you, What are you buying on price? eBay? Albums or Albums, uh, or you know, hockey cards. I mean, I, I'm, I'm wired into that, that world. Pot uh, holders? No, no. I love it. Okay, guy, here we go. Yes, guy, no guy, number one. Brooks Kepka will finish his career with double-digit major wins. Let's start with O. Uh, he's at five right now, correct? Double-digit wins. I'm going to say yes guy to that. Ooh. He's oh. got a it, – it's because he's healthy now, and there's recency, in, the recency bias involved in my answer, Jimmy, because he just won the PGA, and he just looks like he, – he just looks like he walks on the property, and he says, I'm going to be dominant, and I'm going to win this. And for that, I'll say he gets the 10. That's big, man. Like, that's yeah, yeah, five Curtis. more is huge. It's very significant. I, it is, and I think he could do it. I'm going to say no, guy. I just think, like, we grew up in the Tiger Woods era watching him win week after week, year after year. It's almost like we get, became so desensitized to it and how difficult it is to win these major tournaments. And although I think Brooks is a great player and he's playing really well right now and he's healthy, and that's most important, to get to 10 like, we're talking about serious, like, legendary status within the game. Maybe he gets to eight, and that would be a lot, too. But 10 just seems like a, it, it seems far away for me. One word for me, health. So I'm a no guy. I just, yes, he's healthy right now. But there was a time where he wasn't healthy, and we saw that Netflix special. Like, that's what sticks out in my mind is watching that player on the Netflix special. Like, that doesn't even look like the player that's playing right now. And there's a chance maybe he goes back to that player if he's not healthy. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to agree and say no guy. Uh, and just look at the Rory drought for majors. Things can happen. Uh, you know, it's great to be current and you like to think it goes on and on and on. Yeah. But it does we thought not. Rory after that U.S. Open win in D.C. was going to win the U.S. Open every year. He hasn't won, <clears throat> he hasn't won one since 2014. There's a lot of guys like that. eh? Like they, they have a, a good stretch a couple of years. And you're like, oh, this is the next guy. And man, it's hard. It's really hard, and there's never been this many great players playing at the I'm same time. I'm changing my answer to no guy. I'm oh, sorry. wow. I, I'm sorry Dude, I did that. Get your own material. I'm, get your I know. Own. I just said, uh, I thought your answer was really good, and I'm changing it to no guy. Sorry. No Jimmy. guy. No, no guy. You. I haven't heard that in this show for a while. Anyway, um, yes guy, no guy number two. The Leafs starting goalie next season is currently not on their roster, so it's not Wall, Murray, or Samsonov. Noodles, Ooh. you can take the lead on this one. Okay, I'm going to, and this is just a shot in the dark, I'm going to say yes, uh, yes guy. Ooh. Because I think that um, Joseph Wall might be there, but I don't know if they get Samsonov done. And if you don't get Samsonov done, then you go, uh, Tree's a guy that likes the number one goaltenders. So does he go big game hunting? Does he go 
trying to get Hellebuck? Do you try to get John Gibson out of Anaheim? Does he, you know, is it something like that? I just, now I, I might be way off, but I just, I feel like there's a chance that they might want to change that dynamic. I'm going to go completely yes, guy. I was golfing with my buddies today and the Leafs came up and they were talking about the back end and the goal t- uh, goaltending situation, Jimmy, and they want it solidified. Like they don't yeah. want like a project or picking this guy off a team to see if he can get his game back. They want solidified defensemen, NHL solid defensemen, and an NHL proven goaltender and see if that works. But once again, we go back to the guys up front with the double-digit contracts, and is it really possible? That's why there's very few times in the last three or four years or five, they, like trading for a real quality player. It's like you can't bring in a high-priced guy, a real talented guy, because the, they just take up so much of the, the oxygen as far as contracts go. But I say yes, guy, new goaltender, new start. First of all, Jimmy, all right. whoever wrote this question, I believe it was a rod. He's new to the yes guy, no guy game because he should know that we don't say uh, not on the yeah, roster. Yeah. We go straight to the point, yeah. Rod. Either a yes guy or a no guy. It's not a, it's Anyways, not a turn guy, you know, whatever guy. I'm going to say <laughs> no guy. I believe it is on the roster. It just seems like it's hard to make these kinds of moves, especially with Matt Murray earning the, the money that he is going to earn. And Joseph Wall is going to be in the mix because he probably doesn't get through waivers. And Ilya Samsonov, if you could have him back at the right price, I don't know how you can have him back at the right price with Matt Murray in the way. That's something you need to take care of. It just seems like three guys stand in the way of there being a different goaltender for the Leafs next year. Yeah, I'm going to say uh, yes, guy, The uh, to the three that are there. That's it for me. Well, I don't know if it's yes guy or no guy because it's the no double guy. negative. Yeah, Jimmy. that's right. That's yeah. why I did that. <laughs> it's my game. I know all the traps. It's not your game. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is guy. No guy. <laughs> all right. Yes guy, no guy. The Oilers. Oh, my. The Oilers are in the best position to break Canada's 30 year Stanley Cup drought. Oh. The Oilers are in the best position to break the drought. You know what? I'm going to say yes, guy, Jimmy, because mm. if the Vegas Golden Knights didn't win it, maybe maybe that was the Edmonton Oilers standing there. Who knows? Because we saw what happens when those two animals out there, McDavid and Dreisaitl, they're basically unstoppable, and I think they're going to continue to be hungrier and hungrier, and maybe there's a point where you just can't stop them. Maybe they could mix in a save one of these years in the playoffs and have a goaltender steal them a bunch of games. They're not not too dissimilar situation as Toronto. But those two guys are just so good, you would think that they're going to lead the charge and get one of these things one one of these years. Yeah, I'm going to say yes, guy, for right now. I'd like to see what, what Toronto does in this offseason because they've got some critical moves to make as far as with the 10 free agents, right? So to, to round out the team. But as it's built right now, I'll say yes, guy. Uh, agreed. Their goaltending has to be better. I think their decor has to be better. I think they need another top four defenseman. They went and got Ekholm, which was a fantastic move. I think that Bouchard is a, he's still a riverboat gambler, but he's a young kid. And I think Nurse has to have a more stable year. But they need another defenseman there that chews up minutes, a top tier guy. Easier said than done. And their forward group is fine. Like yeah. they've got they've got depth there. But it, you need save absolutely. Oh, and you need one more top tier defenseman. And and they might be they might be cooking. I'm yes guy three across the board, Jimmy. If you look up front, they got their top five forwards locked into contracts. You know those guys aren't going anywhere. I would say Ken Holland has done a much better job of adding depth to that group, like players that can score deeper in the lineup. Like that, Derek Ryan had a good year. He reups for two years. Jamie, I agree. They do need another defenseman, but at least now you're going into the year with Ekholm. So whatever addition right. you're making now is on top of that. I, I think it's the Oilers, and I don't even think it's particularly close because the Leafs have a lot of, like, they have a, a good core in place, but they have a lot of work to do with 10 UFAs, and they're going to have to make some changes to their back end as well. Well, I hate to agree, but I will. So that's an emphatic, a hard, all capital letters, yes guy. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, doesn't get any better than that or more i think that was a yes guy around the horn that's right okay i'm really enjoying this game i hope we play it until the top of the hour go ahead jimmy okay (laughs) and stretch this out i just gotta make a call to make sure that can happen Uh, yes guy no guy despite all the rumors to the contrary the raptors 
will bring back the same chorus, Siakam, Barnes, OG, and Freddie Van Vliet? I'm oh, going to say 100% no guy on that one. I just think it's as much as 2019 is not that long ago, like, Jimmy, is, you're at the game. Yeah. You do the games. Like, that lineup and watching them go out there and kind of come up short, that's getting a little tired, isn't it? It is. It's it getting is. a little tired. I don't know what the fan base, but I just think it's got to change. I don't know when Masai is going to pull the trigger and swing for the fences again, but just watching that roster and those guys fall short, it's a little tired for me. I'm I'm a no guy because I just – I always ask this. Like, who's their number one player? Is Do they have a superstar? Maybe Scotty Barnes can get there. I don't know if he can. It'll take okay? time. The okay, Atkins, so- that guy now, but, it, like, he says he wants to be top. What does he say? He want to be top five in the league? He's not there. But that's he never I mean. will be. No. I don't think if he's, he's not there now, he never will he's be. He's not Jimmy a superstar. Jimmy can confirm that. Right? I, yeah. I mean, you guys speak to it. Is he a superstar player or is he just a star? Which is no well, slight, but it's he's not a, a good superstar. player. He's not a superstar. He's not a superstar. I don't know if I would say that. He's not top five. Uh, I think right. he's more. a very good player, Jim. He's not a superstar, the, the, though. The problem when you when you go over the Raptors starters is they had no support. So right. So if you came back with those four guys and, and the regular starters and had a good bench, might be a different story. But I, but I don't know that the you know I'm going to say no guy. I don't think all four of them come back. I, I'm going to say no guy just based on Fred Van Vliet. His whole persona has been bet on yourself, and here he is now with a great opportunity. He de- denies the player option. He's probably going to get more money elsewhere, and why wouldn't he go pursue that opportunity? I don't think it's necessarily from the Raptors' point of view. I think it's Fred saying, I'm getting a, a juicy contract elsewhere, and I'm going to bet on myself. I always have been doing that. And nothing beats a juicy contract. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is Bill Belichick, and, and the, the, we're going to play this is an audio daily double. I hate to steal somebody else's material, but it's a clip uh, from when the, he was asked about DeAndre Hopkins' visit, and the question is, does Big Bill need to soften up towards the media? So let's play the clip first. So I'm not really a travel agent here. I'm not going to say it's going to happen here or not going to happen. or whatever. There's a lot of other stuff going on that I'm not directly involved in, and so I'm not going to say anything. And then, you know, you turn around and say, oh, I misled you in some way because that's not what I'm going to do. Did this guy have bad experiences with travel agents or something? Or, or just in public in general. I mean, he's just not a trusting man. <laughs> so, so so he does yes guy no guy he needs to soften up on situations like that with the media can i say both yes guy and no guy jimmy well it is yes guy no guy and, and nobody's ever done that before but you you can do that the judges have told me you can do that Well, it's one of those things where i want the guy to kind of because if you listen to him talk and there was like the top 100 nfl players and bill belichick was a part of the panel that voted on the players and listening to his insight and how excited he was and the excitement and how knowledgeable and, and just to see him talk football with a smile on his face, I, I honestly said, who is that guy? And then he goes back with his scrums with New England. And it's just like, I am going to be the most miserable PR in, in the universe just because. And that's his just routine. And I have no idea what that has to do with winning. And I get it. It's a stressful job, but... I'd like to see it happen, but at the end of the day, Jimmy, I know it's not going to happen. So it's yeah. yes guy in the middle of a no guy, if you know what I mean. I know exactly what you mean. This is the first time in history, unprecedented territory we're in. It is. It almost puts me in the lead of this, this game show. Well, I'm not it's like, lie, it's, it's like, oh, I had to use the L-I-T-R to get through. You know what it is? It was a maybe yes guy. guy. That's it was a maybe guy. That's what it was. No, no, it's not you, a yes guy. Would, it's a maybe it's guy. A, it's a yes guy and a no guy at the same time. Never. It been is done only like only me and Jimmy know that because yeah. we go back so far. It's yeah. it's very few times in life can you mix both of them together and throw it in a blender and you have a delicious yes guy no guy smoothie <laughs> and that's what I just made. Uh, okay. I'm just, I'm going to take you back. Oh, so when I first started doing this, you called me and said, Bud, you can't sit on the fence. Pick a side, one or the other. So today, I'm going to pick that side. And I'm going to say, no, guy. Bill Belichick does not need to soften up on the media. Just because I'm picking a side, listen, if he wants to be crusty in the media, that's his prerogative. That's ultimately his face and his words in front of the camera that he needs to deal with. And if that's what he thinks he can do and, and deal with, that's that's up to him. It's not really... For us to to decide that that's his prerogative. Yeah, I'm I'm going to agree. I'm going to say no, guy. Bill is Bill, and and that's what we want. Yeah, I I'm, I'm I agree. 
It's no guy because that's just who he is. He's not going to change the fabric of who he is. The minute the mics are on, he's just a certain persona. Apparently, when the mics are off, he's a great guy. And, you, I hope and so. You can chat him up and all of that. <laughs> he just reminds me, him and Pop, they're never going to change. And, you know, Popovich is the same way. They're just, they're, I don't know if the word's combative, but they're just, they're crusty. And they'll always be crusty. And I, I Jimmy, don't mind. Could it. we could we take a break, Jimmy, and do yes. a couple more? Oh, absolutely, no? absolutely, we can. Uh, you know, I just got a, a text from my lawyer. He says it's okay. Keep going. Loves the exposures. I got to oh. fly. You guys will do it without me. Oh, I'll miss oh, you guys. Oh, wow. Thank you. Where yeah, are you right. off to, Jimmy? I don't want to steal any viewership away from you guys, so I'm not off to anywhere. I just can't be here. <laughs> there you go. I love it. What a trooper. That's why I like working with this guy. Yeah. You know, so it covers tracks. Yeah, absolutely. You guys are the best. Thanks Thank for you, having Steve. me. Thank you very much. And everybody else, stay where you are. We'll come back and continue. Yes, guy, no guy next. An overdrive, TSN 1050 and TSN 2. Yes, guy, no guy. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, drivers and passengers, stage two. Never been done before. Stage two of Yes, Ooh. Guy, No Guy. Okay, you all after set for dark. After dark. <laughs> yes, yes, Guy, No Guy, After Dark. That, that, that's, a, that's a podcast, without a doubt. Yes, Guy, No Guy, After Dark. Okay, here we go. Stephen A. Smith said that he would love to be the next host of Wheel of Fortune after Pat Sajak announced his retirement. Yes, Guy, No Guy, Stephen A. would be a great host for Wheel of Fortune. Absolutely not. No. I don't know. There's just something... To wake up and hear that guy yelling and screaming, and I get it's about hot takes, but I don't know. That's a that's a no guy for me. Oh. I mean, I, he I, might be I, exciting and drive up the ratings, but I, I think it's a no guy because I just I think he would start badgering some of the players. You know, <laughs> like if they make a a bad call or they they can't pronounce the the word or whatever, he'd start screaming at them. I think so. I just I don't think he's a fit. I. I I love Pat Sajak, and I, I don't know. Are they going to keep that show going? Oh, even sure. Though he, yeah. Uh, Makes money. I, I, yeah. I, I think Stephen A. Smith would be on uh, on the late-night version of Wheel of Fortune just because I'd, I'd love to see the argument. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. That's what's – that's like it's the argument, everything, where it's like, did you think that guy played good last night? And it turns into a yelling, yelling screaming match with that guy. Yeah. I don't know. It seems a little bit much. Like you can mix in with the, you know, the odd intelligent comment with the yelling and screaming after. And I know we yell and scream on this show sometimes, but it's like it doesn't have to be every time. Oh, really, guy? You do? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's a little heated. <laughs> no, it's just leaf talk, bad loss. Somebody thinks it wasn't that bad of a loss. Somebody does. It's all good, Jimmy. It is. Okay. I was thinking back over the last hour when we talked about, uh, you know, Bill Foley and, and the, the ownership, the one guy who wanted everything. And you sort of look at the Ottawa situation and there's going to be the one guy who's going to want everything. That's going to be intriguing, isn't it? It is going to be. Everything's going to be intriguing when it comes to Ottawa, for sure. Like, But can you pull off the wanting of everything? And is it possible? And I don't know. It should be a lot different around there because in the in the past, and Jamie's been around the team, like, Maybe it's a lot different. Everyone talks about like their, their their staff, like how it's not as massive as the Toronto Maple Leafs. Well, maybe it will be now. Who knows? Maybe yeah. there will be all kinds of changes. Well, this guy's hands-on. I mean, he's he's really involved. I, I remember him from uh, the Bulldogs in Hamilton, and he was front and center all the time. He he will be visible. That's good, though. I think I would like. I don't mind a hands-on owner. I mean, Eugene Eugene Melnick was very very passionate and a hands-on guy. I just hope that Pierre Dorian gets the resources that he asks and, and needs because I think that team is, is on the cusp of turning the corner, but they, they certainly have to – they're going to have to spend some money to do it. Well, we'll see. Uh, coming up in the next hour, Liam McHugh stopped by the NHL and uh, TSN – or TNT host, TNT. Richard Griffin uh, from GriffsThePitch.com and host of Exit Philosophy Podcast – We'll be by talking about the Blue Jays who lost this afternoon in Baltimore and lost the series. Uh, they lost two out of three. This is Overdrive, TSN 1050 and TSN 2.